how you feel today. We're going to play a little bit of Grixis Shadow. I haven't played it. Didn't play it at all this week, so I decided to give something else a try. Now we'll go back for fun day. So this is uh Brandon Dalloway played at the Invitational. We both, uh, we both were uh, 74 and 75. He played three surgicals and I played two angers, and that was the only difference. So today, I'm gonna try his and give it a roll. Played one league match earlier today, just to kind of when I woke up with some coffee, just to kind of get going, and ended up playing Blue Red Phoenix in one. So. Now it was good, tight match. I think my opponent, I think my opponent boarded out their phoenixes in game two and three, though. So I didn't see any of them, but they also had cards like Bedlam Revler in their deck, so you know it's kind of an odd sequence from them to not have phoenix but have Bedlam Revler. But maybe they were just like a blue red spells matter deck with Crackling Drake. I don't know. But uh, I, I saw phoenixes in game one, so I don't know. Unless all the Phoenix is like in the bottom 20 or so cards of their deck, because you know, they just look through so many cards that it's very easily, it's very easy to um, eventually find one. Okay, so. Saying it's pretty solid. We're going to keep it. I'd like a way to deal more damage to myself so I can play the two shadows on turn two. Like a Street Wraith or a Thoughtseize are probably the best draw. Get a little mirror action. Yep. My hand's not that great in the mirror. as we do. I do have two Death Shadows, but they're also the easiest threat to kill. And um, it's odd. Okay. Well, let's start with the Thoughtseize because... Taking a Delve creature slash making it so we can play two Shadows next turn is nice. It is nice that we're the one with discard spells and they aren't. Okay. So, I think we take... I could just leave them with... <laughs> Apparently my the opponent opponent watches my stream and I was playing four color. So I think I'm just gonna take Gurmag Angler, then take Death Shadow, and then figure out a way to deal with these removal spells, but they don't have a very good card to snap back and they need another land anyways. And if they draw more lands, then I'm okay with it. So let's just get rid of this Gurmag Angler. The mirror is not very fun, in my opinion. Like, it, we both have to play tight and like make sure that we exhaust each other's resources appropriately in the first couple turns, and then it just turns into a huge like, just this, a dumb match of who hits who top decks better. Okay, so they did hit the land. They still don't have anything very good to do with their Snapcaster Mage, so I'm just going to take a Death Shadow. We're just going to move through their threats and then try to find a way to protect ourselves from these Lightning Bolts and Dismembers. Because we can kind of blank the Lightning Bolt. I probably should have actually fetched a Blood Crypt and left up Watery Grave. As now we're probably just going to go fetch a watery grave anyways. It just cuts us off red, but I don't think it's better than wasting our mana. So that's just like for a full retail dismember. That's what they shocked that for. That's odd. I mean, they might try to like bolt snap bolt me out of the game, but that doesn't seem likely. Okay, that's a pretty solid draw. We would like a Snapcaster of our own would be very nice. Or another Death Shadow. So let's just play this. Thought Scour on our main phase. We might hit something. 
to do. That counts as something to do. Skirmag Angler is pretty solid. We can just start to try to wade through these removal spells. So I guess I'll put this on the bottom. I guess I could just put them all on the bottom, or we can just try to overload their threats. The problem is they can deal with three out of the four of the threats right now if we keep Gurmag Angler. So I think I'm just going to put this on the bottom. I'm looking for, like, more discard spells, Snapcaster Mages, or way to deal damage to myself. Kind of not, not really much else. Pretty specific for what we're looking for at this point. All right, that's nice. So if I go Fetch Shock, go to six. Fetch Shock, go to seven. Do we know they have Bolt Snapcaster Mage, and then they can't kill anything. So they drew another Bolt, I'm dead. So I'm just going to... My opponent would like to spend two removal spells to kill a Death Shadow, that's fine. Because they're going to go like, they're going to try to dismember one of them, and um, then have to Bolt it. And then we just have another one following up. Kind of mitigates the Snapcaster Mage a little bit. And we'll F2, wait till we have to respond. And then we can even bolt ourselves if we want to. To beat everything. But like it's a little dangerous because we know they have Snapcaster Mage. They haven't been playing cards, so they've either got like um And then I think we're not gonna like moto our opponent here. If like we're not going to. We might just let this well, I think I'm actually going to bolt. They're going to four. And they can't go like bolt snap cast or bolt unless they hit a land. So their hand would have, like next turn they'd have to have lightning bolt. They'd have to have land. Land lightning bolt as three of the last four cards here. <clears throat> okay, so you got a lightning bolt. Let's just attack with both. This gives my opponent a large shadow if they have a way to get around this, but it also shuts off this. Okay, we'll probably see what they target. And then push this. If they have another fatal push, they can push this and not flashback bolt and not die. Okay. So cards we don't want. We don't want any of the red cards. So these six coming out if we can make it happen. We want the Snapcaster Mages. We want the push. The stub's okay. Um... If we think, so we don't know if our opponent's going to have Leyline of the Void or not. And Leyline of the Void makes me want to leave the looting in in case we draw too many Gurmag Anglers. If, if my opponent, if we don't see Leyline next game, I might just leave in like the Miser's Lightning Bolt because sometimes being able to kill a Walker or something like that is nice with it. But we'll go like this. Living on the edge. Is the thing I love about Shadow. Yeah, very much. 
kind of like the extra stuff. I took the board one or two. Board out one or two. Is that what you're saying? Uh, keep, you're going to keep any hand in any discard matchups. No ley line is nice. So what I do. They're going to target. They target themselves. Don't like the card. They probably discard spell here. Probably take thought seize. If I had to assume. Wow. They're getting aggressive. It's kind of odd. To sh yeah, that's, this is kind of. I think this is poor sequencing for my opponent. Like, if you had the Street Wraith, just wait. And then, I don't know what else is in their hand, but just wait to cast anything else. You know, I think this is a little bit of poor sequencing, but let's go get Watery Grave. Even though we have an island, Watery Grave is still our best land, and this can get Blood Crypt. And then we have pretty solid mana. Okay, so they can play... I kind of just want to take the Death Shadow because we don't have a way to kill it. If they raised into Serum Visions, then yeah. But like e either way, so they had either Inquisition of Kozlek or Serum Visions in their hand before they Street Wraith. Oh, they could have Serum Visions into it. So I guess if their hand was... If their hand's Dismember, Death Shadow, Polluted Delta... I still would hold Stubborn Denial. I wouldn't, I wouldn't Serum Vision on turn one. Regardless. Like I, I would I would hold up to stop this. I wouldn't do that. So I think I'm just gonna take Death Shadow. We don't have a answer. We're gonna lose our Snapcaster Mage. We have Colagon's command. Or vice versa. And we do only have there is just a very minute amount of threats in the deck. So if you can like stall on your opponent finding threats, then um, it's just gonna buy you time. This is gone. So we get this set up. I mean, we're going to be able to get the Snapcaster Mage basically regardless. I don't think that's the right one to take. Unless you can, like, I guess you're thinking you're, you're waiting on, hoping on this. That's not bad. Um, I really don't want to fetch Steam Vents because then I have three lands that don't produce, produce black. So we're just going to like sandbag this fetch land. All right, those are both, those are all nice. So let's put this on top. Put this on top. We might have to shuffle away that shadow, but the, um, the shadow, the Snapcaster is better than the shadow at this junction of the game. We're probably going to have to do that, which is a little, a little sad, but he's probably not up. Is he in college and it's 8.30? Sad. Uh, I'll go like this again. I also now could Thought Scour them to draw both cards, which actually I think I'm going to do. That means nothing to a college student. I don't know. I th when I was in college, I was sleeping at this time. Because I had too much fun on Saturday night. It's kind of a tough hand for my opponent to thought seize. I think that, like, I think hands like this, my opponent should take, like, the cheat card. So they should take, like, Gurmag Angler or Stubborn Denial. Because they kind of got a bag on hoping to trade at least... With the stubborn denial of the Colagon's command because it's expensive. But yeah, I'm definitely gonna thought see thought scar my opponent to get both the shadow and the snapcaster mage. Which is just a nice little trick with Thought Scour. We aren't delving as hard, but uh, like the pacing of this game doesn't mean we have to delve hard. The only thing that we're missing in this hand is an actual way to deal with a Death Shadow or a Gurmag Angler. Like, we're going to be able to, like, pick our opponent's hand apart, interact well on the stack. But we just have to find other things to do. Okay, 
Okay, so they take angler. They take big angles. Okay. Uh, yield until next end step. This is a nice card to have. This is a nice, real nice card in this matchup. So we know their hand is Stubborn Denial Dismember. Spell Bomb's always nice in the mirror. I still think I want the Snapcaster Mage as it's going to do something eventually. And then I think we're just going to go land go. Uh, yield through. My opponent cracks this fetch land. I could go like. My opponent cracks this fetch land. I'm going to. Okay. Good on him. I'm not cracking the old fetch land. Okay, they drew another land. So I really don't want to waste my mana here. So I think I'm just gonna fetch, flash this Snapcaster Mage and Thought Scour myself. And if they wanna let this go, they can just, they can let this go. Like they want to trade Spellbomb for the back half of my Snapcaster Mage and like whatever. We don't just want to sit here and not do anything with our mana. I could have also gone like, I probably should have gone main phase Snap Serum Visions now that I'm going to make this play. And just like, but then like they use the man, they use their one mana left over. Okay. All right. Yield. Okay. Deal through this turn. We might not attack with a Snapcaster. I don't mind if I do. Deal through this turn. I don't think we're going to attack with Snap. I should have held my land in case my opponent commands me. But I get to stub it if they do that. It's interesting. Means they didn't draw Death Shadow. They drew a bobble. Okay. Didn't like what they saw. Uh, yield through this turn. So we have another shadow on top. So again, I kind of just want to like pause, not really do anything, and then play three shadows next turn. Play three Death Shadows, have Stubborn Denial up, and the game is probably over. So I'm just going to yield through this turn here. We've had nice Serum Visions in this set here, which is part of the reason we're probably doing okay. There's no sense making his Death Shadows larger than mine, like because now they can get way larger and we can't set up even any sort of block. Now, in conjunction with this Kologon's command, like any one of our shadows is lethal coupled with the Snapcaster Mage next turn, or in two turns. 
what do we get? We're delving. So if our opponent's delving, now they can dismember, we stop, they dismember back. So now we just wait. Get a watery grave. One. Two. We again, we know two of their four cards. I think I'm going to let the first member, this member go. Because we can set something up where we, like, Colgon's command, they fight, we fight back. And we get to, let's them just use their last mana on their turn. And there's just, like, no need in doing that. Uh, you should be able to see on the Cardboard Live extension there, Don, Don Familio. If you're on your mobile, then might be SOL. So their opponent at four. Both these are lethal. I have to think about whether it's right to attack with Snapcaster Mage. Because we can like attack with both of our shadows. If our opponent like pushes one, we stub. They stub back. They have one card in their hand. They go to block the shadow. We can go like shock ourselves. You discard your last card. Puzzle the chat. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of like how we get wrecked. And I think we get wrecked if my opponent's last two cards are like stub, fatal push. Snapcaster Mage. Because they go like, they go push, snap, push. If they just go push, snap, push, and like, and stubborn denial, then we're just like super dead. Unless we have a. Um, yeah, if they have push and Snapcaster Mage, then we're in trouble. But I think if they have push and Snapcaster Mage, they'd be playing with a little bit more confidence. I'm not blocking if they attack. Okay. That's got to do it. Or it doesn't really change anything. It just makes it so we eat the Gurmag Angler, which is nice. So let's just cycle this, because if we cycle this, okay. So let's not die to
The the surprise doesn't matter, Teddy. Like, I would rather have more information, because if we hit a discard spell, we make them act. Like, just being able to, like, ooh, gotcha, isn't going to do anything. When it comes to, we can just, like, potentially kill them. So, if I go dismember this, this, they stub it, they have two cards. I could just command them right now and get back a Death Shadow and have them discard a card. Just kind of see what they do. I've got to think the only thing that gets them out of this is the Snapcaster Mage. Yeah, I think we're going to turn them sideways. Because we've got two ways to like remove creatures in combat. One of their cards is a stub. Like, push that push is like a beating. But that means they have to cover all of our creatures, and we're still not dead to this Gurmag Angler on the backswing, and we have a command. The Dalloway Special. Right click, attack all. All right, incoming Snapcaster Mage. All right. What is this? Well, let's wait with this on target on the stack. So if I hit this, they stub, bang, bang. If I hit this, they stub, we stub back. They push one, block the other. No. I think I want to start off with a Kolagon's command. Hit here. And make them discard a card. I could just shock them also, which makes the Snapcaster Mage lethal. Oh, man, it's tough. So shock this, make them discard. I think I'm just going to go shock this, make them discard a card. Because they push. We stub. They go to two here. I could just make them... I'm just going to make them commit mana. I feel like I'm so far ahead, the only way that I lose here is if I get too aggressive and, like, punt. So, like, if I just be purely reactive, worst comes to worst, if this all goes to hell in a handbasket, then I just end up, like, dismembering him and then having a Snapcaster Mage in board with a Kolagon's Command in my hand. I think. All right, let's make our opponent make decisions. Okay. So now that they've done this, I think I dismember the Gurman Gangler. Uh, so stub this, they stub back, then they just have the fetch land up. And then we dismember the Gurmag Angler. They then block here, take two. They're at two with one card in hand. And then we have Kolagon's command for next turn. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And let's not lose to... Um, let's not lose to a Lightning Bolt... My opponent knows about both of my cards in hand, too. And they have to, like, to get a blue source off this to double stub, they're dead to the Snapcaster Mage.
I guess I could have just paid full retail too because I think they, they know the remnants of my hand. Yeah, I should have just paid I should have just paid full retail because they, they know that I have stuff in Colon's command. So like there's no sense because like it's not like I'm going to like push anything or um or do anything and now like if this all completely goes to hell in a handbasket then I'm dead to the Gurmag Angler. So that was that was stupid. Okay, so now we let this go. They chump here, go to two. We have an active negate, and then they're dead to the Colgon's command next turn. And their stubborn denial is soft. So. No, I should have just paid full retail. So now, like, we blank this, we have this, and then this is lethal, and this is lethal. So if they have two removal spells, they're dead, because they need two removal spells to kill this, then their last card is stub, and the Colagon's command doesn't die to the stub. And then they die to the Snapcaster Mage, too. So, like, no outs. Okay. See, I get too far wrapped into this shit, Brandon. And I was worried about, like, if their last card is, like, another removal spell, then, like, we're still in the same spot. And I've, I, like, next turn, like, I've just got Colagon's Command plus my own stub. And then both of these are lethal. Let me go back and look at that. Let me go back here. Let's check this replay out. I just was like, now that I've got all this stuff, like, it doesn't matter, right? And this is why I was like, okay, so we got here. We got both of these shadows in play. Okay. Okay, so then we play all of our shadows. They push one of them. We know that they have Stubborn Denial, and that's it. All right, where's our big attack? Okay, so it's right here. So next priority, cycle. Okay. I send it. I didn't right click attack all. Okay, so I'm right here. They go Snapcaster Mage. Fatal push. There's completely toss. So here, if I let the dismember resolve, come on. Let the dismember resolve. So they have one card, one card stub. Even if they have another push, stub, push, block, it's the same thing. We just don't have a stubborn denial. Yeah, so I'm stupid. Because it's the exact same thing. Like, I just was like, all right, I'll wait another turn with my counter spell because I don't think that. So basically, they can't beat this. And I gave them, like, they can't beat this next turn. And I gave them a draw step. Like, I don't, they can't beat this right now. Unless their next card is a push. So we go stub, they go push, block, take two. It's the exact same thing. And if they rip two, yeah. So, yeah, it's because I was sitting here. I'm like, I'm going to hold the stub for the next removal spell. And it doesn't matter. So I should have just, like, gone for it because it killed them. I mean, their stub doesn't work if you just remember to kill the angler. Yeah, because, like, it, it, even if, if they're super dead, they could have kept up appeals or appearances that they have another stub. So you're rewarded for paying two, but still shouldn't have. Yeah, 
Yeah. So, so basically, like, my whole idea here is, like, if I keep this Stubborn Denial turned on and have Kolagon's Command next turn, and they have Stubborn Denial plus one card, they're still completely blanked, right? Because even if this one card, like, I suspect that this card's a Fatal Push, which is where I made my mistake anyways. It, like, worst comes to worst, this card's a push. All right? So, I then, um, <clears throat> if I stub, they stub back. This dies. Their last card's Fatal Push. Push this. This dies. They take two. Or no, they push one, they take two. Because, right, stub, stub, this dies. Well, no, so here was my idea, right? Isn't this where, because I thought, like, worst comes to worst, this is a removal spell in hand. So, if I stub this, they stub back, this resolves. They have another removal spell. They stub, they push here. And then, um, and then we're down to Snapcaster Mage. But if I do it the other way, they fetch a basic. If I just, like, stub here... They stub back, they fetch basic push. Let this resolve. They fetch push go like this trade. So I actually was stupid because I couldn't. It's not like I couldn't beat another fatal push, but I couldn't checkmate another fatal push. But I'm still very far ahead because they're they're I guess they're hellbent. They're hellbent at three versus an eye of color gods command versus the top of their deck. So if they had another push, I was actually in trouble. Well, if they had another push, I was in trouble, right? Which is what I was worried about. And, like, I... I, I guess I just played it wrong anyways. Because stub this, stub back. This resolves. Fetch basic, push. I guess I should have looked at their land, see if they had basic swamp still, which they did. And then... And then they trade. So then it comes down to off the top of their deck versus the Kolagons command. So I was stupid because I was playing around something I couldn't beat on the board. So like I made a mistake here. If they don't have another Fatal Push, if they don't have... This was my other idea. If they don't have another removal spell, then I get to Kolagon's command next turn to look to kill them with the Stubborn Denial live. Because I have the Shadow. So I kind of wanted to, because even if they just have one chump take two, I wanted to command with backup. So that's why I didn't do it. But like, that's the second reason. The first reason was stupid. The first reason I was like, oh, if they have another removal spell, I want my Stubborn Denial, but I can't beat that. Then the second reason was keep my Stubborn Denial around with my Death Shadows live in order to kill them. All right. So the, the, the primary reason I made my play was stupid. I think the secondary reason I made my play was good. <clears throat> Whew. I'm going to grab some more coffee. Hey, boy. So Phil, Phil turns one tomorrow, chat. It is Phil's birthday. I am pretty hyped. Because it's Phil's birthday, I'm going to go get a steak and give him a piece. Only because it's Phil's birthday, not because I like steak or anything. <clears throat> All right. All right. I would like to play first. 
Uh, my man is awkward, but I don't think he can mulligan this hand. Like we have, we have like a removal spell and a thought seize, and we're on the play. My opponent gives me the old GL. Say you too. Okay, so we're dead. Oh, they don't have a natural. Okay, so we have a chance. Let's take this expedition map. That's a nice draw. So I'm actually going to play the Steam Vents and Serum Visions because we could hit a black spell here. All right, we do need that Death Shadow. We have a good old Lightning Bolt to get it into play. So we're going to put this on the bottom. We're going to put this on top. We're going to yield through this turn. Walkie boy. Well, wow, that's nuts. I get to point my fatal push at something. Okay, so they played Urza's Mind. Mine. Okay. So I could go snap Thought Seize and hit this Oblivion Stone because I doubt I'm going to be able because, like, we play, we bolt ourselves, play Death Shadow, it's at four. I untap, snap Thought Seize. They put this into play. Snap Thought Seize puts me to six, or put, makes this a six. We crack them. They make a land drop. And then we crack them. So if we find a way to deal damage to ourselves, then the shadow kills them before this O-Stone pops. Which I think I like. It's kind of risky letting them have, get the O-Stone in play. But we might get them to the point where we can... We can actually snap Bolter. No. We might be able to like get them to the point where like a Snapcaster Bolt EOT kills them. So I think I'm going to play the Shadow. Okay, so there's Tower. Uh, yield until next time step. So if I go Snap Bolt, I crack them for 7 and then it's lethal next turn. So let me see what my opponent's drawing. Because if they're drawing something like uh, like the other Tron piece, I probably have to Thought Seize. Okay, so they're not. Yeah, I think I'm just going to attack Snap Bolt. Because if they had the Tron piece, they obviously would have played it. So they're just going to play this Forest and not do anything. So I'm just going to go Snap Bolt myself, crack them for 7 Battle Rage next turn. Okay, they play their forest. They still have scrying. Sweet. All right, let's serum visions first. If they have a dismember, what happens? This goes to two. Yeah, so they have a dismember, then we could get brown. So let's hope we find a fetch land. We didn't find a fetch land. Doesn't really matter. We're just going to go for it because both of these things are. Game's probably out of reach. Okay. Okay. All right. So against Tron, Stub comes in, Stroke comes in, Command and a Braid are okay. I was land based because this member's not good. Fatal push is not good. I don't think Snapcaster Mage is very good in this matchup. But then again, like, is Snapcaster Mage better than Colgon's Command? I think it is. I think it isn't. I think K Command being a rebuy Street Wraith 
or like shatter a worm coil engine and buy us some time there is important. Uh, I could cut a Gurmag Angler because they're going to be so deep in Relic, but I think the upside on Gurmag Angler is higher than the upside on Snapcaster Mage. I could like board in an extraction or two just to try to take some win conditions from them. That also feels kind of mopey. Like, I wonder for science if it's right, if it's okay to do this. Like, cut these and bring these in. Because I'm pretty certain that my Snapcaster mages aren't going to be that good this game because they likely have at least three relics. They're moving faster than my Snapcasters can. Like, by the time my Snapcaster's turned on, if they're doing their game plan, then the Snapcaster Mage likely doesn't matter. And, like, the extraction enables more explosive shadow draws. I'm going to try this. This is, like, not, you know, this is, like, a uh, YOLO. Like, there's not, there's not a lot of, like, hardcore um, ideology behind this. Heater. It's not, it's, it's, it's like, this is just a hand that's so explosive. These could be anything. They were just going to keep it. Okay, Matt, sure, yield to this turn. All right, I'm going to fetch first, because we, we don't want to hit another land. All right, there's something at least. There's another thing. Now, do we want to cycle another one of these? Is it worth playing a shadow on two? It probably is. If we can play a shadow on one, then we're going to do it. All right. Now we're in trouble. Okay. Ancient Stirrings, Chromatic Sphere, Chromatic Sphere, Urge's Mind, Urge's Power Plant. Urge's Power Plant, Urge's Mind. So we just take one coil engine. Even though we have one coil engine, we have this covered. We can't stop them from getting Tron, so this means we have a, another payoff covered. And we're just gonna play a land and go, and pass. We're not gonna, we're not gonna thought scour on our turn. Uh, you were putting your video on YouTube or did you share that? Thing? Thank you, Alexander, Alexander Hack. Appreciate it. I've been working on this thing. Um, recently where I've tried putting like my off stream games on YouTube with like no camera or no volume because most of the time that I'm doing that I'm like those are the games where like my wife is sitting behind me watching TV and I can't really stream and it makes it so it's easier to put decks up like Ironworks or those decks that are a little harder to stream you can still make video content on them so I've been um, I've been like messing around with that. Where's his tower? But I need to get like a better, like the YouTube editor kind of sucks. Even if you don't have commentary, I really enjoy them. Yeah, so the, the YouTube commentary, the YouTube editor is not very good because it doesn't let you put multiple songs from the YouTube archive on at the same time. What do we got here? You're just going to, like, do nothing here. No, we're going to play another sphere, probably. Okay. This ancient stone is gone. Relic. Okay. Okay, so just cycling. Um, I don't really like that play from our opponent. Like they should have just waited. You have plenty of mana. You could have like done something with this, which means they probably drew a uh, like a worm coil. They probably drew, drew like a world breaker, which is why they kept this because they could have like um they could have like thought scoured or something like that. Not thought scoured. They could have searched for another stirrings. Well, this didn't work out. I could just abrade this to cut them off a draw. But that seems kind of loose. 
Oh, do I have a red land I can get with that? Yeah, I do. All right, he'll do this turn. And it's going to kind of suck if this is a world breaker because they can kind of they can recur it. Our draw did not pan out. We had a pretty explosive chance, but it just didn't quite come together. Yeah, so here's the worm dad. Eugene, get out of here. And this is the kind of game where Snapcaster Mage would be very good. So it's worth thinking about. Because we've gotten to the point of the game where like things have slowed down. We're both kind of like don't have resources. But like the only reason that Snapcaster Mage is really good right here is because we have not hit a threat. So like, and like, even if we counter one thing, does the Snapcaster Mage itself, is that going to win us the game? I mean, it probably would win us the game if it, we, we had like a Snapcaster Mage here and we went Snapcaster into Death Shadow. So like if we draw Death Shadow, we want Snapcaster Mage. If we don't draw Death Shadow next turn, we don't want Snapcaster Mage. Yeah, not doing anything. <clears throat> 30 viewers this morning. I appreciate y'all showing up. Karn, we're dead. Uh, we're going to give them a polluted delta. And now I think we're just like, we're super dead. Which, like, we just didn't find a duder. But we did board out one duder. We boarded out a, a Gurmag Angler. Yeah, we're dead. So... Maybe we should board the net. I'm down for boarding the Gurmag Angler back in the play because we have some draws that just beat, um, that just beat the, that beat Relic with Gurmag Angler. I'm going to say GG to my opponent because they said GG to me after they lost. So, do I want the Snapcasters or the Surgicals? As we saw there, each one of them kind of buy us time. Because, like, the surgical, if we would have hit a surgical, we would have probably taken the world breaker. Or not the world breaker, the one of their win conditions, which saves us time. If we'd have hit a Snapcaster Mage, the Snapcaster Mage would have countered the Karn, which buys us time. And I don't think we had a Serum Visions in our yard. So I think I think overall, even though and we're much more explosive on the play, anyways. I think the Snapcaster Mages are better. I don't think we want a lot of them, but I do think they are better. On the play, at least. Alright, sounds nice. It is very nice. <clears throat> I want to get... I want to have two of every color, so let's go get a Blood Crypt. No, that's stupid. I'm going to get Watery Grave because we need to fetch. I don't really want to fetch for like a Steam Vents because if we draw another discard spell, then um, if we draw another discard spell, then I want to go discard spell Shadow next turn more than likely. All right, what do we got here? We got two-thirds of this plus a way to harass our graveyard and an O-Stone. So let's take this O-Stone. My opponent Logan. I didn't even see what they did. They put a card on top. So they probably either put a Tron piece or a or a map, if I had to guess. You'll do this turn. So let's ditch this. All right, that's not good. So 
So now I'm going to get a Steam Vents because we're not going to cast like more than two black spells in a turn. And I want to keep up the appearances that we have a Stubborn Denial. I don't think my opponent's going to buy it. But, you know, it's what we can do. Going back to that Shadow Mirror, I think that's actually kind of like a weaker part of my game. Urza's Power Plant. Because I actually did not play a lot of the Grixis Shadow Mirror um, when the deck was very popular. Don't dismember me, bro. So they're going to draw this card. It's a Worm Dad. All right, we're going to need a little bit of speed here. Okay, they're cycling, sure. So now they we know three out of their four cards. Okay. So this goes get goes and gets something. As long as it's not another O Stone. Like if they go like if they go tower O Stone, then I'm gonna hurl. That's exactly what they're doing. Okay. Oh, that's savage. That means they can Ulamog me next turn. Gross. We can counter the Ulamog, but we're still up shit creek to the worm coil. Fudge. So. God damn it. I can't even like. I think I've got a shock. Because we've got. So we counter. We draw a lightning bolt, lightning bolt. If we shock here, it gives us light bolt, bolt is runners for outs. <clears throat> bolt, Kologon's command, runners for outs. Another disdainful stroke or a discard spell, and we're still kind of in it. So, there's the tower. Yeah, pick your targets. They'll probably go here, here. They might just go like two lands. I'll block your death shadow. Okay. All right, let's go get Island. We need a discard spell. Oh. Nah, neither of those do it, right? Neither of these do it. <clears throat> the sad part here is like my out now is dismember or drawing like in a braid off the top. So let's put this on the bottom. Put this on the bottom. Play Gurmag Angler. Like we boarded out dismember, so dismember is no longer an out. Yep, there's the Worm Dad. So if we rip a Death Shadow, we're still in it. That might not be the case anymore. And we got to get a Braid off the top. Yield through this turn. And now even Dismember. Like, like I was saying, like if, we, if that had been a Dismember, 
we might have, we might have had a shot. They send it with both. Whoa. What is this? I would have attacked with both. Yeah. Okay. A braid or lightning bolt or braid. We need a braid because I need to. Yeah. Yep. They got it. Man, Tron is tough. Who do we have coming? Thoughtseize. Yes, we needed that Thoughtseize that was on top with our Scry to come one turn earlier. But, so we saw how in game one, Lightning Bolt won us. So, like, I sometimes like Dismember in this matchup because it uh, it helps fight over the top of one Coil Engine. But we also saw in the first game how uh, Lightning Bolt won us the game because it made, it got a creature going on. No, I got a creature going on. That's a dumb way to put it. Because it let us power our Death Shadow. Um, I'm going to keep this hand. It's a little, like, we don't want to see a vial. But if we do see a vial, we can dig. All right. So we're playing against Storm, which our hand's also not that great against. Put two cards on the bottom. All right. Our hand's decent now. All right. I don't think we actually want the second bolt. <laughs> Unless we want a bolt to get our shadow in play. So is it worth it to cantrip? When we could just find another way to play our shadow? Which I think cantripping is, is better. Because like they're probably their their easiest turn next their easiest play next turn is probably a bear. And we have that covered. If we find a street wraith. So the Snapcaster Mage is likely good. Because it'll be good at some point. So now, oh, I fucked up. I needed to get a red source there in order to go like Pathos Looting plus Steam Vents or plus Lightning Bolt. All right, no bear. No bear from our opponent. Wow, no land either. Okay. So now I'm tempted to just go get Blood Crypt and. Faithless Looting, and then play Shadow. So I think it's very unlikely, even with seven cards, they kill me from here. Okay, so we want... We probably can just ditch this and this, and now I will Thought Seize them. Okay, Grape Shot, Electromancer... So I could just take the Grape Shot, because once we get the Shadow in play, we're going to be able to snipe this Gifts Ungiven. So I think I'm just going to take the Grape Shot, because I want them to work to kill me. Um, I could take, like, Opt, in the hopes of just land screwing them, and they still get two looks at a land. They probably have, like, 19 more lands. They probably have, like, 18 more lands in their deck. So I think I just want to take Grape Shot. Because... If we don't take Grape Shot, the next turn I go play, I play Death Shadow, and I can't give it just Grape Shot by Shadow, then I, it dies. So yeah, I'm just going to take this Grape Shot. Upkeep Opt. Why would they do that? Why would you opt on your upkeep? That's odd. All right, throw it all out the window. Let's just get our mana really solid. I don't understand why our opponent upkeep opted there. That shit is whack. I'm just going to get aggressive. We have so much mana, a Snapcaster Mage to reuse it. OK, 
Okay, so this is gone. This is gone. Let's thought seize them. Okay. So I kind of want to take Manamorphose. Because it's the card that lets them get going. They're going to sacrifice so... They're like, they're going to... In order for them to like hard mode it for a gift I'm given, they're going to shoot their wide in such a sense where the next gift I'm given is basically also two for one. Like, So I think I'm just going to take Manamorphose, play my land. They have a Lightning Bolt, so we just have to be careful. There's still no sense to do that on the upkeep to look for a land, right? When you can just hopefully just naturally draw one. It's not like you're setting up the any other cards that you're going to draw, you know? Okay, let me do some math. So if I snap stub this... Now nah, we're just going to, like, not do that. Yeah, they just scooped it up. Okay, draw a card. What do we have to come next? We, we could get nasty. We probably wouldn't even cast it. Okay, so in this matchup, Stubborn Denial comes in. The Fatal Push comes in. Cards I'm not really interested in. I'm not super interested in Faithless Looting. I'm not super interested in Lightning Bolt. Um, even Dismember is a little scary. I like to cut one Gurmag Angler on the draw because it doesn't get under Remand. I could bring in the Surgicals. But I don't even know if we need Surgical Extraction in this matchup. I could play another Snapcaster Mage. So I could go like this. I could also just like leave the bolts and keep the dismembers in. What is the new hot tech? Oh, where's that second slot? Yeah, that was funny. Because I really don't like Dismember because their whole plan is to like burn us out of the game. Lightning Bolt doesn't hit thing in the ice. So it kind of feels bad, but it is just another answer to a bear. But then again, like I don't know how many bears people bring in. But Bolt also goes upstairs if we need it to. Or it bolts ourselves. So like we could just go like this. Um, and then, like, the other alternative is we cut our lightning bolts and we bring in surgical extractions. Yeah, I mean, sometimes. The problem with Dismember is that their whole plan is to, like, burn you out in this matchup. Like, they bring in Lightning Bolts. They, like, mini Grape Shot. I kind of just want to... On the play, I might try bringing in some Surgicals and cutting, like, a little more, like, removal. But we've got six answers to Bears. Three of our answers go upstairs. I'm, I'm really... I'm really kind of... Ex I, I, like, I'm just going to do this. This is because we brought in two Snapcaster Mages and we had the extractions. I just want to play with I don't play with extraction very often in my sideboard that I just want to bring it in. They they have they have played Thing in the Ice in the past. So this hand's not very good, right? I mean we get to stub something, we have a thought scour, we have a bolt for a bear and an extraction. I'm just um, if we don't find a shadow, we're just like not gonna win. Our opponent kept on seven. I think I'm just gonna keep it because I have an extraction. I want to see if I can get like extraction, snap extraction, or something like that. Like I'm just playing the surgical because I don't. I'm like keeping this hand partially because I don't play a lot with surgical extraction, and I would like to see how it is here. Oh, I just don't doubt about that. That probably would have been good. So now we can, like, we can stub. It's kind of it's kind of awkward if our opponent plays a bear because I guess we can just go like, watery grave thought scour, and then untap and lightning bolt. Yield until next end step.
There's no sense in doing that, right? They, did, they didn't scry any cards to the top, right, Tim? All right, there's our boy. That's a nice draw. So now we get to do... Okay. All right. So we could take Ritual, Surgical Ritual. Our opponent plays Baral. We stub the Manamorphose. We stub Pieces. It just is like, is Desperate Ritual like an actual good thing to, to counter or too surgical? Or is that just wasting it? Because we have Snapcaster Mage, it doesn't matter. All right, we're going to do this. Again, we're just we're trying this out here. It's going to grow our shadow. If they want to draw step this, they can do that, whatever. We'll stub a remand here. We'll stub anything that enables our opponent to tap out. Okay, so what they hit? They hit a piff. Okay, so let's go here. Here. And again, like, this might be a little fast and loose here, but we're just doing this because we want to We want to learn. I, I, I don't play a lot with Surgical. I would like to be more comfortable. I want to figure out when I can bring Surgical in. Like, for example, I know that when Dmitry Budakov used to play uh, the four-color shadow deck, he used to bring in Surgical all the time, like in a lot of matchups. So what they got? They have two things. They have four pieces. They have one more piff. They have three bears. They have madcap experience. What the fuck? What does madcap experiments even do? Oh, they have Platinum Imperion. Okay. They don't have Blood Moon. So they have two Grape Shots. Okay. All right. Okay, so they play their Snow Covered Island. I hate, absolutely hate how this doesn't show this stuff here. All right, that's a nice draw. So they have pieces, Piff, Manamorphose. Okay, so now we just play this. We pass the turn. With a bevy of options open to us. You do? Okay, thank you, Ben. Okay, so that's what they drew. Okay, so there is Baral. So Baral, so this is gone. Baral. So we just stub this. Or we bolt this. And then do we just let this, and if we stub this, because they have Manamorphose. So they just have Piff pieces of the puzzle. So I think we just stub this. Because they can't do anything. So now I just go fetch Shock. Because they just have piff pieces. So fetch shock. Watery grave. Crack them. I didn't do the math there. And then we just stub whatever the next play is, we stub it. And then we like thought ski thought sees them or whatever.
No, nothing cast beforehand. So let's. And then we go snap surgical and we kill them. Yeah, that works as well. So their hand is Piff, piece of the puzzle. And it doesn't matter. Okay. All right, let's play for the old 4 1 here. Yeah, so I put up two videos recently on my YouTube channel of myself um, just playing Moto without any noise or um, or camera. So it's just, it's all blank. And I've been working on trying to get, uh, I have another video. People are going to do a lot of slow plans with Thing in the matchup. That's something, another thing that's weird. Like, I don't think Thing is good against Shadow. Because, like... Like isn't I think the I think the burnout plan is very good, but like if they have it and you don't have an answer to it, it's just another free way to win. All right, this hand's good. We're gonna go get a blood crypt so that our street wraith is live to play a shadow next turn. Yeah. Like I think like thing is like they are just like like there is some merit in diversifying your win your wing conditions if you're playing against a deck with Thoughtseize. Okay, so we're playing against blue-white with a Jace and a Supreme Verdict. Those are two kind of hard cards to beat. Okay, so there's the Colonnade. Yield through this turn. All right, so now we get to play our Shadow. So let's go like this. All right. It's kind of sad that we have to do this. I guess we can wait. Our shadow's one point smaller, but it'll be that size next turn. Let's just do this first. All right. So we take the non we take the non stubble spell. Um, what are the odds this is gonna matter? I don't think it's gonna matter. So let's just go get a watery grave. No, that was stupid. I should have left it out of steam vent so that because we have battle rage. And we are set up no path one time. And we should just ride this one out here. Steam vents. Crack for six. All right, opponent, do you have a mana leak or a way to deal with this? So they played Hollow Fountain. Spell Snare. Because now they have four cards. We know them all. Okay. What, a, what an impressive deck. Okay. Colgon's Command. Disdainful Stroke. Stubborn Denial. Cards coming out. Battle Rage coming out. Um, Faithless Looting, Lightning Bolt. Okay, so I don't know if it's right to, because like, so my last two cuts are Fatal Push or Lightning Bolt. And the big, the big difference between having Push means you don't just get randomly punked by a Colonnade or like, but Lightning Bolt lets you play this little like, you know, especially with in conjunction with the Kologon's command. So, like, I used to keep in Fatal Push, but people that I consider smarter than me determined that the Lightning Bolts are better. So, I'm going to play with the Lightning Bolts. I'm going to keep in my Dismembers, because Dismember also hits the, uh, the Big Angels. Yeah. We have to be worried about getting ripped because getting ripped is a good way to lose. All 
All right. I mean, this hand's like you're not mulligan in it. It's a little slow. Kind of the, the man is awkward. They put me on the play. That's that's the second blue white opponent that has put me on the play in the last couple days. All right, I think I just take this rest in peace and then look to uh, look to find a ways to deal with the other cards here cuz like like if we tell if they kept if they rep us then like our best draw like snapcaster mage isn't good. How's it going Oceanborn? I'm going to lead off with this in case we spike a discard spell here. It makes so that we can't play two shadows, but Playing shadows a turn later is not that bad, so we're gonna put this on the bottom. We're gonna put this on top, and then we're just gonna do it again. I don't remember if it was. We don't want either of these lands. So I'm kind of down with playing two shadows, even if my opponent gets the path one. Because they're going to path one anyways, and it gets a better clock on the board. So, yeah, I'm just going to play two Death Shadows. And who knows, our opponent might get greedy. I'm going to just get full of the mana, all the mana here. Yeah, rip, rips, rips very good. Because like like one of my better cards in this matchup is um, Snapcaster Mage and cutting off Snapcaster Mage is good. What is this? They are opting. They are opting for a good time. You gonna path me? No, they're like a second organization. So I still know their hand. It's going to be kind of tough. So Fetch Shock 6, Snapcaster Mage, Thoughtseize 8, Path, they get cracked for 10. Let's just do this before we do it, because we're going to do this no matter what, because we have to hit that, su that Supreme Verdict. And if they counter this, then I might be able to kill them, depending on how they counter it. Cure the waste for two. Okay. Jeez. So I just gotta take this verdict. I mean, there are some. Yeah, I mean, there are some games where you just can't beat it. We're going to take the Supreme Verdict. I'm going to attack. No way. Or just like someone wants to die today. <laughs> Why would you not block? At least one of them. Are you you're like that worried about your Jace? All right. All righty. All right, let's jump back in for another league. I don't I think I'm going to keep it. Yeah, I don't know. All right, let's go back